Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Stanger, and I am the District Planning and Environmental Management Administrator. The purpose of this meeting is to conduct the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5, Tentative Work Program Public Hearing for fiscal years 2016-2017 through 2020-2021. For the public hearing record, the date today is October 15th, 2015, and the time is 6.02. I would like to start by thanking you for your attendance. At this time, I would like to recognize any elected or appointed officials who have joined us tonight and desire to have their names entered in the, into the official record. Do we have any members of the legislature with us tonight? Please stand up and recognize yourself, please. Thank you. Are there any mayors, city council members, or county commissioners in attendance? Finally, are there any other public officials or representatives that wish to be recognized? Okay, thank you. Before we present our major projects within District 5, I would like to take this time to notify you of the update to the Florida Transportation Plan. During 2015, the Florida Department of Transportation and its partners have worked to update the Florida Transportation Plan, also known as the FTP, the Statewide Long Range Transportation Plan, the FTP serves as the transportation plan for all of Florida, not just for the Florida Department of Transportation, and identifies the roles and responsibilities of all partners for implementing this plan. The FTP also establishes a policy framework for allocating the state and federal transportation funds. The FTP will consist of three elements. The vision element includes trends, uncertainties, and themes that will shape transportation in Florida for the next 50 years. The vision element was published in August of 2015. The policy element includes goals and objectives to guide FDOT and its partners in accomplishing the vision. Its time horizon is 25 years to match the horizons of Metro Plan planning organizations long-range transportation plans. The implementation element will describe emphasis areas with key actions for five to ten years the implementation element will be developed in 2016. Throughout the year, FDOT has provided opportunities for the partners, public and partners to provide input to the FTP. As a result, the draft policy element is available for review and comment from October 15, 2015 through November 14, 2015. For more information and to download the draft policy element of the Florida Transportation Plan, please visit floridatransportationplan.com. Please provide your comments on the draft policy element by taking the survey found on the website by November 14, 2015. A flyer which summarizes the STP policy element review is available at the sign-in table. At this time, we'd like to present a video for you that will discuss the major projects in District 5. Good evening and thank you for attending tonight's District 5 tentative five-year work program public hearing. I'm Steve Olson, the Public Information Manager for District 5. District 5 consists of nine counties. They are Brevard, Flagler, Lake, Marion, Orange, Osceola, Seminole, Sumter, and Volusia counties. Our purpose this evening is to conduct a public hearing on the department's tentative five-year work program for fiscal years 2016-2017 through 2020-2021. This public hearing is being held at the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Office Building, located at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Cypress A and B Conference Rooms in Deland, Florida. These proceedings are also being broadcast live to the John H. Jackson Community Center at 1002 Carter Street in Orlando, Florida, and via the internet at www d5wpph.com forward slash 2015. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on September 24th, 2015 and October 7th, 2015. The Administrative Register is the official publication used to announce state agency public hearings and actions. This public hearing was also advertised in the following newspapers. 
The Ocala Star Banner, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. Leesburg Daily Commercial, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. The Daytona Beach News Journal, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. Flagler News Tribune, Wednesday, September 30th, 2015. Florida Today, Brevard County, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. The Orlando Sentinel, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. The Orlando Times, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. La Prensa, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. And the Sumter County Times, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. Announcements were also provided as a public service on other regional media outlets. In addition, notice of this hearing was posted on several internet websites, including the public involvement section of the FDOT website located at www.dot.state.fl.us. To comply with federal legal requirements, we are entering into the official public record information pertaining to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Civil Rights Act of 1968. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Contacts for Title VI and Title VIII of the United States Civil Rights Act are available at the sign-in table. The district's tentative five-year work program for fiscal years 2016-2017 through 2020-2021 has been developed in accordance with these acts. Before we begin our review of the tentative five-year work program, we would like to introduce the members of the District 5 team representing the department this evening. Ms. Noran Downs, District 5 Secretary. Mr. Alan Hyman, Director of Transportation Operations. Mr. Frank O'Day, Director of Transportation Development. Mr. Brian Stanger, District Planning and Environmental Management Administrator. Mr. Mario Bizio, Program Management Engineer. Mr. Steve Friedel, Work Program Administrator. Ms. Mary Schozel, Government Operations Manager. Ms. Claudia Calzaretta, FDOT Liaison. Mr. Jamil Gutierrez, FDOT's Liaison for Orange, Osceola, and Seminole Counties. Ms. Lorena Cusick, FDOT's Brevard County Liaison. Mr. Gene Ferguson, FDOT's Liaison for Volusia and Flagler Counties. Ms. Kelly Smith, FDOT's Marion County Liaison. Ms. Vicki Weish, FDOT's Liaison for Lake and Sumter Counties. Mr. John Booker, District Government Liaison. Ms. Shannon Estep, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. And myself, Steve Olson. Each of these individuals have an important role working with local government officials and their staff and metropolitan and transportation planning organizations, as well as other transportation agency representatives to develop and deliver the projects contained in the district's adopted and tentative five-year work program. At the conclusion of the presentation, you are invited to provide formal public comments regarding the projects. Comments can be provided using various methods. You may make a verbal statement during the public comment segment of tonight's hearing. Provide your written comments tonight using the comment form provided and dropping the completed form in the comment box. Take a comment form with you and mail the completed form to the address shown on the form. Provide your comments directly to the court reporter this evening or provide your comments electronically using email or directly from the work program website. Department staff is available to help you complete a comment card if you require assistance. All comments pertaining to the District 5 tentative five-year work program, regardless of how they are submitted, must be received or postmarked by Monday, October 26, 2015, at 5 p.m. The five-year work program is a list of projects that provides clear direction on where to build, when to build, and how to fund projects. The development of this work program involves extensive coordination with local governments, including metropolitan and transportation planning organizations, and other city and county officials, in urbanized areas, metropolitan and transportation planning organizations have the responsibility to develop transportation plans and prioritize transportation needs. Each year, the work program is balanced financially. New projects are nearly always included in the fifth year of the cycle, ensuring that the financial balance forecast for the first four years 
is maintained. As a new fifth year is added to the cycle, the current year drops out of the plan, introducing a new five-year work program. In addition to the new fifth year projects, the department could potentially defer and or remove projects from the first four years based on the outcome of the Florida Revenue Estimating Conference forecasting. This year, the department received a project priority list from each of the planning organizations which has been adopted or approved by their board members in July. The department reviews these priority lists and financially balances the projects based on the work program budget. As a result of this review, the department will program projects as part of the district's tentative five-year work program. The department also receives priority lists from portions of unincorporated Flagler County, which is a non-metropolitan planning organization, and the same process is followed. Though the department is heavily involved in the planning for all modes of transportation and is the lead for highway improvements such as bridges, it is not the lead agency responsible for improvements to airports, seaports, spaceports, rail, and transit facilities. However, the department does play a significant role in financing these facilities through the administration of state and federal grants, as well as other financial assistance programs. The department's final tentative five-year work program will be made part of the statewide tentative five-year work program that will be reviewed by the Florida Transportation Commission and the Department of Economic Opportunity. The commission reviews the statewide work program and its elements for compliance with federal and state law whereas the Department of Economic Opportunity reviews the program for compliance with local government comprehensive plans. The Florida Transportation Commission will hold a statewide public hearing on the tentative five-year work program for fiscal years 2016-2017 through 2020-2021 on Monday, January 11, 2016 in Tallahassee at the Burns Building, 605 Suwannee Street, Tallahassee, Florida. After the commission hearing, the work program they recommend will be submitted to the governor and then to the legislature for funding approval. The work program will be adopted on July 1, 2016. For more information, we invite you to visit the department's work program public hearing website at www.d5wpph.com forward slash 2015. Here you can learn more about the work program process view frequently asked questions, and access maps for the adopted and tentative projects. There will also be a recording of tonight's proceedings made available on the website. In addition to any comments you have regarding the work program, we would also like to know what you thought of tonight's proceedings. Please complete an evaluation form before you leave and hand it to one of the FDOT staff members at the door or at the sign-in table. The department uses this information to enhance future public hearings. If you are joining via the internet, an evaluation form is available on the work program website. Tonight's hearing will consist of presentations related to a few work program projects, followed by a period for public comment. If you have any questions about the format of the public hearing, please let a department representative know. Now, we would like to introduce Ms. Naran Downs, District 5's Secretary. Good evening, everyone. My name is Naran Downs. I am the District 5 Department of Transportation Secretary for the local nine counties. Thank you all for being here. I do appreciate each and every one of you coming out on your free time to hear about what's going on with DOT and how are we spending your tax dollars. The DOT mission makes sure that we have a safe transportation system that moves people, goods. We make sure that it involves economic prosperity for all and sense of community while preserving the environment. I love our mission statement because our mission statement says congestion and fatality free. One death is too much in our district as well as all the other districts in the state of Florida. So safety is always number one for us. For an update on our commitment to you, I want to make sure you know that we provide a quality service, quality customer service, and we take seriously to make sure that we can provide as many projects for you with the different funding sources that we have. We have some federal dollars, local dollars, and state dollars. So we want to make sure we give you the best bang for the buck in each of the modes of transportation. Yes, we build big interchanges. We're doing a big train project, SunRail, as you know. We're ripping apart I-4 
and building a lot of our intersections and our interchanges, but we also do bike paths, uh, uh, safety projects, lighting. We work with the seaports, the airports, the spaceports, and we work on many different projects to move people from point A to point B. Our three big projects that we're currently working on is I-4, Sun Rail, and Wakaiva Parkway. Let's start out with I-4. Some of you are being affected already with I-4. We have about 500 different designers on that 21 mile section that are designing this project for you. They are divided into four pieces. As you can see when you drive the corridor, you will see that the land is being cleared, ponds are being uh, developed, borings down into the ground are happening, getting ready for our bridge structures. And we're basically gonna rip up 21 miles of I-4 you'll start to see lane shifts going on right now. So please be careful, look at the maintenance of traffic and drive very safely. This is gonna be a long project, six years total, but I promise you it's going to be very attractive uh, and it'll, it'll get you there um, faster and everything will be up to current standards. So it'll be worth the wait, but we do ask for your patience and make sure you watch out for your safety. In addition to I-4, we're working on SunRail. We've just built the first phase of SunRail, the first 30 miles. We have 12 stations up and running. Uh, trains are on schedule. And we have about uh, uh, 3,800 uh, boardings per day. Our, our first year estimate was about 4,300, so we're about 10% off. But we do believe um, in the future that we will see much more ridership. So we built the first 30 miles, very, very exciting. Uh, we are right now, in addition to that project, which is the first 30 miles, we are adding extra safety features and we are adding quiet zones for those that had funding for quiet zones. We had just received a uh, word from the federal government that we have $93 million that they had given us for their 50% fair share of phase two south and we were very excited about that. We have um, the local dollars and the state dollars just about ready to be finalized. All of our contracts are advertised and we should be out for construction in a couple months on phase two south, which goes all the way down into Point Siena in Osceola County. There'll be four stations there. We are also working on phase two north where we're at 60% plans and that's going to go from all the way from DeBerry to DeLand and we're waiting for our 50% fair share which is about $35 million through a Tiger grant and we should be hearing in the next month or two of where that grant stands. So we're waiting in anticipation of that. And if that wasn't too busy for us on SunRail, we are also working on going over to the Orlando airport which is very important. Um, we are starting to negotiate with our funding partners for that and we're using the Orlando Urban Utilities Corridor to get from SunRail Phase 1 and Phase 2 over to the airport. The airport currently is building that $200 million multimodal center that will house SunRail all aboard Florida and a third entity. So that'll be very exciting and that will be built by summer of 17 and SunRail Phase 2 will be built around summer of 17 and then we could hook up the airport project. It'll be very exciting between those two points. As you know, we have transit-oriented development being built around the stations and our original projection for that was a billion dollars. Right now today, the projection for the transit-oriented development, the commercial property, the residential property, the mom and pop stores, the coffee shops, they estimate to be about $3 billion worth of economic prosperity along the whole 61 mile corridor. We're working on Wakaiva Parkway as well, the Lake County section pieces as well as the Seminole County section pieces. Most of them are all past 60% designs. We're busy getting our permits and we're starting to buy the right of way for that project. Wakaiba Parkway, remember, is the beltway around central Florida, and this finishes off the beltway. Um, the expressway authority is also building Orange County pieces while we're building the other two county pieces. We still have a couple projects outstanding. We will be doing a design build in spring of 16 in a Lake County piece, as well as the big I-4 Wakaiba Parkway interchange, and that will be spring of 17. Well, every year we get a new allocation of funds, 
And every year, our job is to make sure that we balance our budget. We have to make sure it's all balanced and it comes out to the proper amounts of money. So this year, as we usually do, we added our resurfacing projects, our traffic operations projects, which are signal heads. We're also looking at um, um, new technology, whereas if you platoon through a set of lights, that they're all green. So that is uh, some of the smaller projects that we're working on. In addition to that, we make sure that the projects that we have in our current four-year work program, while we're adding a fifth year, that they're all up to date. As you've seen, there's a lot of apartment buildings going on and commercial buildings going on. And what that does is that ups the prices of construction projects because they're competing with the roadway projects. It's the same construction workers trying to work for one company and another company with all of this development going on as well as the road and bridge projects going on. So with that, prices go a little bit higher. So we have to make sure that those costs are covered. So we upgrade all of our estimates and make sure they're the right estimates so when we let the contract for bid, we'll get as many bidders as possible and we can get the lowest price. So that's what we've been working on a lot for this um, fiscal year that we've added into the work program. I'm Frank O'Day, Director of Transportation Development for the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5. Last year, the Department of Transportation was authorized to spend $10 million to complete the Coast to Coast Trail. The Coast to Coast Trail is a 250 mile long recreational trail that begins at the Gulf of Mexico, stretches across Florida, and ends at the Atlantic Ocean in Brevard County. Once complete, this trail will further enhance ecotourism opportunities in our region and bring people from all over the United States for the unique opportunity to travel coast to coast without a car. The Coast to Coast Trail runs through DOT's districts five and seven. There are 11 projects that need gaps filled in the Coast to Coast Trail in District five. In addition to the funds authorized last year, the legislature and governor this year provided $25 million annually dedicated to non-motorized recreational trails that are part of the Sun Trail Network. The entire Coast to Coast Trail is part of the Sun Trail Network. Our intent is to use these Sun Trail dollars to fund the remaining unfunded gaps in the Coast to Coast Trail system in the upcoming years. I will provide a summary of our progress on the 11 gaps in the Coast to Coast Trail. Beginning in Sumter County, the South Sumter Connector is a 19 and a half mile long trail that connects the existing Withlacoochee State Trail to the existing Van Fleet State Trail. A feasibility study is underway evaluating two proposed alignments. The environmental study is fully funded in fiscal year 2017 for $650,000. The design portion of the trail will start in fiscal year 2019 and the right-of-way and construction phases are currently unfunded. As I mentioned earlier, our intent is to use SunTrail funds in future years when the projects are ready. The next gap to be filled is the South Lake Trail, an 11.4 mile long piece that is being split into three sections. The first section begins at the Van Fleet State Trail and ends at Villa City Road. Design of this section is underway at the cost of $4.1 million. Right-of-way will be needed for this project and will cost $7.2 million and is funded between fiscal year 2018 and 2021. Construction of this section is currently unfunded. From Villa City Road to the east, the Coast to Coast Trail overlaps with our planned widening and realignment of State Road 50 in Groveland. The design of the trail up to State Road 33 is currently underway and right-of-way and construction for the trail are currently unfunded. The final section of the South Lake Trail is from State Road 33 to Silver Eagle Boulevard and it's currently under design for $850,000. Right-of-way costs are estimated at $5.4 million starting in fiscal year 2018 and $2 million for construction is programmed in fiscal year 2019. Moving to Orange County, the Clericona Okoe Connector Trail is 0.2 miles long and is in the design phase for $306,000. Right-of-way is programmed in fiscal year 2018 for a half million dollars and construction estimated at $217,000 is programmed in fiscal year 2020. The other trail project in Orange County is 4.3 miles long and it's the Pine Hills Trail. An environmental study is currently underway for $250,000 Design is programmed in fiscal year 2018 for $1.5 million. Right-of-way and construction currently are unfunded for this segment. In Seminole County, there is a 0.7 mile long connector to the Seminole Wakaiva Trail at the south end of the county. Design is complete, but construction is currently unfunded. 
The department is currently working with Seminole County to complete construction on this piece in southern Seminole County. A second gap in Seminole County is at the North County limit. It begins at Wayside Park in Seminole County and continues north a half mile across the St. Johns River Bridge. This connects to the existing Spring to Spring Trail in Volusia County. We have recently settled on an alignment across the US 1792 bridge and design will start immediately, estimated around $700,000. No right-of-way will be needed for this section of the trail and construction is programmed in fiscal year 2018. Moving into Volusia County, the next gap in the Coast to Coast Trail begins at Guy's Road and ends at Gobbler's Lodge Road. It is three and a half miles long and is currently expected to be delivered as a design-build project for $3.8 million in fiscal year 2019. In Brevard County, the Space Coast Trail begins at State Road 406 and ends at the Max Brewer Causeway. A feasibility study is underway. Design is fully funded in fiscal year 2019 for $800,000. Right-of-way needs are undetermined at this point as the trail is mainly on public lands. Construction is funded in fiscal year 2021 for about $1.7 million. The last remaining gap is 7.8 miles long and begins at the Max Brewer Causeway and ends at the Atlantic Ocean. The PD&E is fully funded in fiscal year 2016 for $430,000. Design is estimated at $4.5 million and is programmed in fiscal year 2018. Right-of-way and construction are currently unfunded. District 5 will continue to work with the cities and counties along the Coast to Coast Trail over the next few years to fill in the gaps in the Coast to Coast Trail network. Our central office staff have committed to work with us and the recently authorized SunTrail funding to make sure the Coast to Coast Trail is delivered and becomes another attraction for Central Florida residents. And now I will turn it over to Shannon Estep of the Florida Turnpike Enterprise. Hi, my name is Shannon Estep and I'm with Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. I'm here today to go over some of the projects we have in the District 5 area. In Osceola County, the Turnpike will widen the main line from US 192 to south of the Osceola Parkway from four to eight lanes. These additional lanes will be express lanes and includes pavement milling, resurfacing, bridge reconstruction, and roadside safety improvements. Construction is programmed for fiscal year 2019 at $77.8 million. We are adding more projects to the five-year work program. Please refer to your handout for additional information. Thank you. Again, thank you for taking part in tonight's District 5 tentative five-year work program public hearing. You know, your involvement in the process is vital and your opinion matters. To learn more, please visit the website at www.d5wpph.com forward slash 2015. If you wish to provide comments and or questions after the hearing, you'll still have the opportunity to do so by filling out a comment and evaluation form online. All written comments must be received or postmarked by Monday, October 26, 2015 at 5 p.m. Thank you. As you have seen, the three major projects, I-4, SunRail, and Wakava Parkway, will enhance the system-wide multimodal transportation network within District 5. Looking ahead, these projects will transform the way Central Florida moves. The district is also excited for the Coast to Coast Trails project, which will include, which will connect our trails from the east to the west through Central Florida and is a portion of the larger Sun Trails network. If you wish to make, if you wish to comment verbally at this time and have not completed and returned a comment form, Please raise your hand and an FDOT representative will bring you a comment sheet and collect it from you. Do we have any comment sheets? Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any others who wish to make a verbal comment at this time? Okay. As previously mentioned within the video, if you wish to provide further comments on the work program, after this hearing you may fill out a comment form on the work program public hearing website. Written comments must be received or postmarked by Monday, October 26, 2015 at 5 p.m. FDOT representatives will be available for the next 30 minutes to answer any questions and will continue to collect comment and evaluation forms. We would like to thank each of you for your attendance.
comments and participation in a work program public hearing. The time is now 632 and the public hearing is officially closed. Have a wonderful evening. What, one more thing um, before everyone disperses. Uh, I want to take time to recognize Mary Schozel. Uh, she is currently at our viewing location at Paramore. This is Mary's last year with FDOT and her last work program public hearing. Mary has worked for the state of Florida for almost 35 years and has worked on the work program public hearing for about 20 of those years. So Mary is a great asset to the department and we hope she will have success in whatever she decides to do after she retires. Thank you everyone.